That was me 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm Andrew Roberts. I'm 15 years old. And I'm here to tell my story. I was born on October 8, 2003. So I was about 12 months old when the Red Sox broke the curse and won the World Series. At the age of one, my parents also had trouble encouraging me to move on from baby food and eat solid food. They took me to a feeding therapist and she noticed that I had sensory issues and recommended I take occupational therapy. My grandma was watching an autism awareness special one day and she saw the story of a young boy who shared several traits with me. Those traits, as well as my sensory issues, helped my family connect the dots as they began to suspect I was on the autism spectrum. I was officially diagnosed with autism just before turning two. In the same year, I was working with a speech and feeding therapist. After several months, she told my parents that I may never speak. My parents refused to believe this, and they enrolled me in the home-based program at the New England Center for Children, also known as NECC, a local school for autistic children, in hopes that I could overcome some of my challenges and learn to talk. I worked with a teacher named Stacy Krober. I made fast progress with Stacy, and by the time I was three, not only was I talking, I was reading. That's one. Two. That's right. Where? What does this say? A gram and a gum. Duh. Gum. Rock, rock mountain. So if I get a red, I get to go to gum drop mountain. That's right. Although I made rapid progress, it came at an expense as I was spending 30 hours per week inside with teachers. I was working much harder than most kids my age. However, thanks to my progress at NECC, I was able to begin integrated preschool in public school with supports at the age of three. NECC was inspired by my progress and my story. In the meantime, my brother Ryan, who was two years younger, was diagnosed with autism and started with NECC at a very young age. Though we have the same diagnosis, my brother and I have very different challenges. He is more extroverted and made friends more easily, but we both did very well during our time at NECC, so our family was one of a few featured in an NECC promo video. Ryan, um, Ryan was different from Andrew. He started with Nick at a very young age, at 16 months old, which is an extremely um, young age to start. But once he started with Nick, I mean, he just like, he shined. I was always interested in letters and numbers, so which, that's one of the reasons why I learned to read so early. My parents thought that I might be intrigued by baseball cards because of the players' numbers, stats, and names. When I was five, my parents got me a set of 2009 Red Sox baseball cards. I had witnessed the 2004 World Series as a baby, but it wasn't until I was five that I became an avid sports fan. The baseball cards did indeed intrigue me. I learned all the players' numbers. I learned about some of the stats on the back, which is a big aspect of baseball. And I began watching the Red Sox and reading the lineup before the game. I also began keeping box score. When you keep score of a baseball game, you write the lineup with players' numbers in the left column, and you can keep track of their stats throughout the game. I grew to really enjoy this. And in June 2009, I went to my first Red Sox game. I really enjoyed the experience. When I was reading the lineup off the big screen at Fenway before the game, a Red Sox usher noticed me. He was impressed that I was reading the lineup at such a young age. He asked my dad, how would your son like to be an Essen Junior announcer? Junior announcers got to announce the lineup live on TV. We couldn't turn the opportunity down. My dad got in touch with the Nesson producer, and not only did they agree to have me on air as a junior announcer, 
They arranged for me to have the opportunity to say play ball live at Fenway on Autism Awareness Night. In August, the Red Sox made it happen. On the 24th, I said play ball live at Fenway Park in front of thousands of fans. After the experience, I told my dad, Daddy, I just said play ball at Fenway Park and it was so much fun. My dad says today that he will remember that moment for the rest of his life. It was the first time I really verbally expressed a lot of emotion, and I had just underwent a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Just six days later, I announced the lineup live on Nesson as a junior announcer. Leading off for the Boston Red Sox, Sarah Peel, Mr. Jacoby Ellsbury. At second base, Mr. Dustin Bedroya. First base, Mr. Victor Martinez. At third base, Mr. Kevin Euclid. The, the DH, Mr. J. About a week later, I started kindergarten at a public elementary school. I continued to receive supports from an IEP team, but I did not need quite as much supports as I received in preschool. However, one thing I continued to struggle with was social skills. Social skills never came easy for me. When I started elementary school, most people in my kindergarten class had started to make friends and talk to each other. but. I didn't talk with other peers much. I chose to keep to myself because I just found it difficult talking with peers. I didn't trust them. A lot of times, I didn't know what to say, what to talk about. I was fine with adults, but I realize now that part of the reason socializing with kids in particular was difficult for me was because most elementary school kids are unpredictable. I like predictability and routine, so at the time, this was not ideal. <laughs> I still received social skills services, including structured recess, where an aide from the school would encourage me to play with other kids. I also participated in a social group, where me and other socially challenged students worked with a behavioral specialist to improve our social skills. I worked with a teacher named Mrs. Marcello when I first got to Peasley. She gave me a warm welcome to the school and I continued to support me and continued to support me in various ways throughout my elementary school career. I grew to become friendly with everyone, but I wasn't a true friend to many kids, if any at all, that were my age. A part of me had always wanted to fit in and have a lot of close friends, but in elementary school, no friendships extended outside of school. But when I got to middle school, I found a few close friends that I was comfortable with. It takes me a while to warm up to people and learn to trust them. But once I'm warmed up, I found that I can be a good friend. In middle school, I met a lot of new people. And I found a few peers who I gradually became comfortable talking to. My parents wanted me to come out of my shell and take advantage of more social opportunities with kids my age. But I thought a few friends was all I needed. I think kids on the autism spectrum like me can be very loyal once they warm up to someone. They can be really good at hyper-focusing on things and become experts on certain topics like I am with sports. I'm also rules governed, so I'm not the kind of kid that gets in trouble or gets my friends in trouble either. These are all good qualities for friends, and I wish more of my classmates recognized this and approached me in and out of class. Like many people on the autism spectrum, it is hard for me to initiate with new people. But if you came up to me and asked me a question about the Red Sox or if I thought we'd have a snow day tomorrow, I'd definitely have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> so
Since I was about five, I have been obsessed with sports and weather. Thanks to living in New England, my obsessions with sports and weather have helped me relate to others and gave me plenty to talk about. <laughs> hey, maybe everyone in Boston's on the spectrum because all we seem to talk about is our sports teams and our crazy weather. For many years, once I learned to write, you could often find me with a pen, markers, and paper. I would make weather maps and write tons of things about sports and weather. There were always tons of papers all over the house with things I wrote or drew. By the time I was 10, my mom decided to take a book from the library about starting a blog so that all the papers could go digital. <laughs> my mom and I knew this was right up my alley. A lot of people love sports, especially Bostonians, and I had a lot of unique opinions, so I decided to blog about Boston sports. In March of 2014, I created a website on WordPress.com called Boston Sports Mania. I grew to really enjoy blogging about sports, and I realized I wanted to be a sports journalist for a career. Today, not only have I written hundreds of posts and gained hundreds of followers, I have gained valuable sports casting experiences. I have been really lucky to have a lot of support from family and friends who have connected, with me, connected me with professionals in the industry. In August 2016, Felger and Maz used my blog research for a segment on their show. This is someone who does some baseball research, a kid by the name of Andrew Roberts. He does a, a website called Baseball Bits by Andrew Roberts. You should check it out. Google it. Andrew Roberts Baseball Bits. My parents were often told that my obsessions were a bad thing. Looking back now, seeing the messes I made, I could understand why. <laughs> the speech therapist I worked with before I was two told my parents that a boy my age should not be playing with so much alphabet toys and be obsessed with letters. She said my focus should be on learning to talk first. But almost 14 years later, not only am I talking, I am a freshman at a public high school with straight A's. I am a strong writer who turned my obsessions of reading and writing about sports into a passion for sports journalism. I've learned over the years that while a lot of things are difficult for me or take a while for me, I can do anything I put my mind to. I wasn't the first my age to ride a bike or swim or even run a mile. But once I learned, I wanted to do more. This gave me motivation to compete in a triathlon. No, I did not become an elite athlete or anything, but I did compete with other kids my age, and I finished. <laughs> While I was not skilled enough to play in Little League with my peers, I played in a Challenger League baseball league for the last five years. My dad introduced me to tennis, and I started playing through a specialized program known as Acing Autism. I graduated from the program, and I wish that I could play in more advanced groups to improve my skills, but I have not yet found a program that matches my skills and learning pace. I've taken on other sports where I've even become good enough to participate with my peers. I learned to ski in a weekend through the Waterville Valley Adaptive Sports Program, thanks to a grant from the Flutie Foundation. I had been afraid to sled down a small hill in the neighborhood, but the program helped me overcome my fears. Everyone learns in different ways, and this program not only taught me, but now I go every week with my school's ski club, with no support other than a few bucks from my parents to buy chicken tenders and fries in between runs. <laughs> I just wish more sports programs could integrate both special needs kids 
and typical athletes and teach me and people like me with varying skills who need to learn in different ways. I wish there were more community programs that embraced, not excluded, neurodiversity. Instead, I often find myself acting when out in public. I don't always feel comfortable being my true self due to worry I will be picked on. I've grown to trust my closest friends and I'll be myself with them, but I often find myself acting to make my autistic challenges a little less obvious. Acting in social situations does have its benefits, especially because I grew to enjoy acting on stage. <laughs> I could be shy at times in real life, but I was never shy on stage. In school, I started on our third grade performance of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Outside of school, I had a lead role in Sleeping Beauty and The Jungle Book through the Town Recreation Department. So acting in social situations helped me improve on stage, sure. But though it seems natural in social situations, it doesn't feel that way. I know what I struggle with. So I wrote my own transition plan, incorporating the areas I knew I needed to work on the most. But I've put in plenty of effort to overcome my challenges and learn new skills to cope with them and become independent. Though I'm beginning to overcome some of my challenges, I also work hard to embrace my strengths and my diagnosis as a whole. I use my strong hyperfocusing skills and my rules govern nature to succeed in everyday life. For example, I can hyperfocus on schoolwork. Once I get started with my homework, I just keep going. <laughs> Although I'm too hard on myself sometimes when I break the rules, my rules govern nature has allowed me to keep my brain in control and avoid risky decisions some teenagers make. Most of all, I have embraced my obsessions and turned them into a budding career. Today, I still cope with many challenges. I am still working on coming out of my comfort zone, socially and emotionally. My fear of coming out of my comfort zone is the root of many of my challenges. Though I have become more independent, I still have several important life skills to learn. I may cope with some anxiety and stress, and I often struggle to trust my own judgment, but I do not let these challenges define me. For example, this past summer, I had my first real job as a sportscaster. I covered the Special Olympics in Seattle and focused on covering the golf tournament. After walking most of the 6,800 yard course each day and taking countless notes and pictures, I worked extremely hard to write and produce a story and video each day. The first day of the tournament, I accidentally deleted almost five hours of work this would not be easy to cope with for any teenager. <laughs> but for me, when things don't go as planned or expected, I can't control my emotions and my mind and usually have a reaction that is not in line with the problem. This makes solving the problem nearly impossible. Fortunately, I had my dad with me who understands my challenges and worked with me to talk through a plan that would help me calm down. We even reached out to my mom at 2 a.m. Boston time, and she helped me calm down as well. I know I have some challenges, but I've been lucky to have the supports to help me work through my problems with me. So over time, I can try and work through them myself. Ultimately, that day in Seattle was really hard, but I got through it. And even though I was really worried about missing the first couple hours of round two, I learned how to adjust my plan. The results were some of the best work I have ever done in sports and set me up for many other opportunities that happened over the summer. The Boston Herald invited me to be a guest co-host on one of their sports talk radio shows. 
I produced my own show, known as Gonk Knox, where I covered my high school football team, providing exclusive coverage of training camp. The team even honored me with a team sweatshirt for my contributions. And at the end of the summer, I recorded a PSA for the Flutie Foundation, and it aired for a month on 98.5 The Sports Hub. Apex Entertainment Center in Marlboro wants families to spend time together and have fun. That's why they support the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism, whose mission is to support families affected by autism. I'm Andrew Roberts, a 14-year-old aspiring sports reporter. The foundation and Apex Entertainment are proudly supporting my career efforts. As a Flutie Fellow, I am earning a valuable sports reporting experience. For more information about the Flutie Foundation and my Boston Sports Mania blog, please visit flutiefoundation.org. I will always be autistic, and the personal struggles still occur. But today, I stand here as a Flutie Fellow, a football color commentator for Northboro Cable TV, a researcher and announcer for 98.5 The Sports Hub, and a writer for my school newspaper. Though I am not a full-time sportscaster yet, as I am still in high school, I now have real experience in professional sports journalism. All of my experiences have came as a result of my sports blog, where I've turned my obsession into a potential career. I carry business cards to help promote my blog and start conversations, so if you see me, please be sure to ask for one. <laughs> my blog has helped me develop lasting relationships with many, and I hope to develop more. I am proud of my story, and I hope to inspire others. This is only the beginning of my story. Hopefully, the world becomes a place that embraces the neurodiverse community like I embrace my own differences. I hope to be able to continue to succeed, whether it be as a sportscaster, or in another role, as I refuse to let my challenges define who I am. I'm a budding sports journalist who just happens to be autistic. Thank you for letting me share my story so far. <laughs>